Okay, boom. So let's, let's get into this. First of all, I'm really excited. Yay! Finally, um, we've been talking about doing this for a while, and it has happened. This is the journey with Brandon Thomas, right? Yes. Um, so basically, this podcast is about giving people their flowers while they're still alive to smell them. Oh. Right? Mm. Um, so yeah, so basically, I talk to people about their greatest moments in life. Oh, and I okay. talk to people about, um, hmm. I just talk to people like just about their life because I think you don't, you don't get a moment like this until you make it to Jimmy Kimmel. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're like, now, how did you get here? And you're like, ah, I did well, all this stuff. But I don't think that there is a place for people's stories in the okay. middle. So yep. while you're in your journey on your way to this thing that you uh, desire to get to. Got it. I think we should talk about it. I agree. Let's talk about it. Okay. <laughs> that's, so, that's such a great concept. I love it. I think. Because a lot of times we don't tell people how we feel about them, what we think, and a lot, like we're grinding so much, and people, what do we get? We get a like, maybe a comment with some fire emojis, you know, but. The other standard. Than that, and, right. Um, <laughs> yeah! You're I'm, like, I'm over here killing myself, it is! And, you can, and all you get is a like. But I love, yeah, I love right, it. First, I love it. <laughs> this is my friend for real. So look, so I was looking at this thing, right? And yeah. I, I was looking at a friend of mine who's a really big influencer, his picture. Okay. And I saw some friends in the comments. And literally, it's a like, three fire emojis, and that's it. Yeah. You don't even care. You're just doing <laughs> your do. you know what I mean? Like your standard work, yeah. like, three flame emojis, and go. Four laugh emojis, and go. And it's like... Yeah. Damn, imagine if you were genuine and we're just like, well, how much longer did it take to say, hey man, this is really funny. Wow, this is hilarious. We have gotten, we've just gotten so lazy in expressing ourselves. Lazy in communication and lazy in emotions. Emotionally lazy, mentally lazy, lazy in our communication. Dare I Social say, media has made us. Dare I say, hella lazy. Yeah, very <laughs> much. Like, like so lazy. I don't want to take the time to think about how this makes me feel. Because if you think about it, I'm scrolling through my timeline. Right. You can literally be happy, jealous, sad, hilariously laughing, all in the span of like a minute, yeah. right? And so it's like emotionally lazy. I don't want to take the time to think about how this makes me feel, but I want to give you props. So I'm just going to fire, fire, fire. Dumb. I'm out. Yeah. Sucks. <sighs> <laughs> so, all right let's, but yeah so so you only really get love this is this why I've, you only really get love when you die when something tragic happens to you yeah. on your birthday those are the designated yeah. long text you know yeah. what i mean that you get oh come on long text you like, see, plug? I, I, I did that on accident but it worked <laughs> Shoot me your email and I'll add you to my motivational e email series called The Long Text. It's dope. It's cool. Yeah. I can do what I do. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so it's like finding space, again, in the middle. And I think yeah. that, I think this works for me just because like I'm overly sentimental. So like I'm always Aww. like trying to like a You're find one of the it. good ones. Uh, Aw, he has a good heart. But I just... I think I'm this way just because I haven't found anything wrong with it. If that mm. makes sense. Like I don't mm. I don't think that living sheltered or living protected from how you feel is better. Man, okay, that whole comment is just like I'm really mad at you right now. Okay, that whole comment has been my entire last year. I'm going to uh -huh. tell you why. Go for it. Oh my gosh, I'm so mad at you right now. I, whoops. Like, ah, I, no, no. I have um, no idea. So, I used to be the girl who cared too much, cried too much, mm. too much, mm. too much. Uh, Subjective. wore my emotions on my sleeve. Like, you could always tell what I was thinking, feeling, everything, right? right? And uh, then I learned that that was not productive because. In the world of, you know, basketball, you show your you show your emotions, and they're like, get them, you know, like they're automatically used against you. Right. In the world of like, you know, sports culture, as far as like dating and talking, and not just sports culture, the world's culture now. Right. But 
uh, it's not really being authentic is not celebrated. It's not like people will step on you, right, right, right. right? And so I learned how to not do that. My heart got hard in a in a religious sense, you know. Right. So it's been interesting because throughout my walk with with God, um, He has been like, be like, soften that heart back up, soften that heart back up. You, I, I can help you. So this year has basically me. L- been me learning how to be like that again mm. and it's been really annoying but it's been great totally because i feel like i'm back to being me totally and i think the the statement really is is that it's not it's not easy no it's, it's n- brave it's not easy because like it's not always reciprocated no and it's not no. necessarily that you do it to hear it or yeah. you do it to get it back but there is um, there is a give of it yeah. that empties your bucket faster than it can it faster than it can be filled at times. Yeah, which is what makes it feel almost like a, like a drain. Yeah, yeah, and and people don't pour back into you, and they don't necessarily protect you. Yeah, and a lot of times it's seen as weak when really. Walking through life without protecting yourself is really the strongest thing you can do. Totally. Instead of weakness, but it's seen as weakness and taken advantage of too often. And what I've found for me personally is the people that I have been able to help Mm. or the people that have drawn close to me because of it is worth the feeling of, is worth the negative feelings that come with it. If that mm, makes sense. Yeah. That the helping of the people that I can pass the message on to yeah. is worth more than how I feel. Because in my opinion, in most cases, it's not about me. I'm a religious yeah. person, and for me, I am the vessel. Mm, so yeah. if I'm complaining about being the vessel, I feel I'll be worse off without the message. Mm, that is That is really good. That's a very altruistic way of, of thinking and I, I think that's that's amazing I totally agree I think for me I had learned how to protect myself so well that it was learning like unlearning everything right. that I had learned no totally yeah I mean totally and and I'm not perfect at it you know what yeah. I mean and like I I understand and I think that I've been through a lot of I won't say every phase because I'm still living, obviously. There's still more to be explored. But I've been through a lot of phases of this to where, you know, I can put on the... I can can be fake open. Oh, oh my gosh. I can be be fake open. (laughs) Uh, Where you think... You think you close. You think you near me. And you don't know where I'm at. Well... You know what I mean? And it... it, But but it's... uh, it is a, it's a, it's me protecting myself. Yeah. Because when people, when people, when people find this thing and they're low, they will, they will get it. They yeah. will come to take it mm-hmm. because they know that you have it yep. and they'll fill up and leave. This is, this is absolutely and it's, true. And it's like, yo, like I thought you were here to stay, but you was just here to get f- filled up off of me. Yeah, and then le- listen. Yeah, but I but was, but yeah. but look, but look, but this is where it flipped for me, right? Yeah, is is that I felt the animosity of that. Like, yo, you filling up on me? I've been and literally people were sent to me during these crazy times. <laughs> like, I'm like, this is happening to you. Whoa, this is crazy. <laughs> yeah, people were literally. I was just in their life for this moment of this chaos. Wow. And I was like, yo, you know what I mean? And then we would make it through this moment and I would yeah. think, wow, like I have a friend for life. Like yeah. we've been through this thing. Never hear from him again. And I'm like, one particular case, I'm like, you are literally about to kill yourself. Man. I'm not saying that I, because as you grow up, it's not about me. Yeah. But I thought we would at least communicate. I thought we would exchange yeah. happy birthday tags. Right. Literally. Never <laughs> talk to a person again. And I'm like. And at yeah. the time, I was just kind of like, yo, like, I'm giving this thing for nothing. Yeah. And then I, and then as you start to 
at least for me, as I started to understand, is that like that is the separation of me getting me out of the way. Mm, yeah, it's, it's about the health. that's Brandon. Yeah. That's my pride. Yeah. yeah now yeah. we should be friends forever. Mm. No, I was the vessel to get you the message that you needed in that moment. Mm. And I keep going. If we're friends yeah. forever, obviously I'm open to it. Yeah. I, you know what I mean? But the people you attract being that vessel, the people you attract that do stay are going to be the people who are truly worth it. 100%. And if you weren't as authentic as you are, you would not attract those people. I think so. Yeah. And it, I think. And I it's think such a weird true. conversation to have because so many people ain't going to get it, if that makes yeah. sense. <laughs> that you're like... I you know what? Never, mind. never mind. <laughs> I'm like, and then the people leave after that, and they're like, yeah, okay. And I'm like, they're like, who cares? And like, so did know. you yeah. see anything good on Twitter today? <laughs> That's cool. Again, social media has made the, us lazy. The Twitter, man? Yeah. I, yeah. Lazy. Kind. Of, the things that people make on Twitter let me know that we are not lazy. We are just focused on the wrong things. Because some of these memes, I'm like, yo, you are an artist. How did you come up with something so funny on Tuesday? It's not even the weekend. This is Tuesday. And you came up with this? You yeah. designed this? You put these pictures side to side? Yeah. You are an artist and you're wasting your gift on me. I, can you, have you ever thought about like how many books could, could have been written if people took their time on social media and put it into writing books or composing sonnets or like actual art that was going to stay forever and change the culture or change people instead of just being on a timeline? Uh, I had not. <laughs> but, uh... I think about that a lot. Like Chantel, how many hours, like I've written a book, I'm working on my second one. Um, and I'm like, this would have been done already if you had taken all the hours you spent on Instagram and instead were writing. And I'm like, Here, here's my flip side to that. <laughs> how much your audience reads books compared to how much your audience consumes content on the internet? Mm. You can write that book. It's going to be dusty. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be, it's going to be sitting there. Yeah, but I think that there's, I still think that there is a medium for books, even if it is audiobooks. Like you look at podcasts and the resurgence of podcasts, people are consuming long form content or yeah. you have the Audible app. I know being in LA, I'm in my car all the time. Right, so right. like I listen to audiobooks. And so, I mean, I know for a fact this second book, it's going to be turned into an audiobook off jump. 100%. Right? At the same time. <laughs> You're like, but. No. No, t no, no, no. I'm saying the the hard copy and the audio book need to come out together. Oh, so yeah, probably. So you can probably. pick which one you... Yeah, probably. Because I agree a lot of people are buying audio books, but yeah. I think it's like sometimes you need... Sometimes you need both. You can't... Because mm, yeah. it's, it's jokers ain't picked up a book since the Sat 9 in high school. Know, you know what I mean? <laughs> And it's like sad <laughs> night. That's so sad. It is, That's so but sad. I miss reading. They're fine. Look, I miss reading. It's no. fine. <laughs> no, it's I still read. That, I still read. Out. <laughs> that is out. I miss reading for fun. Oh. Like just yeah. fun. Like Kinda. I used to read books like all the time, and then now, yeah. I mean, I'm reading a book right now, but it's just like. I. For me, it was always like when I started a book. If I didn't love it off rip, it was going to be really hard for me to finish. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I and I and it's like that is such a because if you do if you get three bad books in a row, you're, you're like, like forget it. Yeah. What's on YouTube? You know what I mean. <laughs> so, it, and I'm a writer, so that's like why it's even more weird. Yeah. But I was. Are read, you writing a book? I'm not writing a book. Um, but I kind of have. I yeah. wrote a, a really long short story, if that counts. <laughs> um, so I mean, I I. So a short book or a really long short. One of the two. I I, I call it a pamphlet. Okay. Uh, you know, like it's just a thick pamphlet. It's not quite not a it. book book, but I love it. Yeah, I don't even want to get into that. That's gonna take us another ten minutes down the freeway. <laughs> um, but yeah, okay. Here we go. What has been? I'm gonna give you three. Hmm. Okay. What has been the greatest moments of your life? 
Oh my gosh. And you just thought of one. And you don't want to say it. No. I, no, I was thinking It's okay that's if that's really not the greatest hard. one. I know. Warm up the car. Give us one. Um. Okay. I remember in high school. Okay. And I... Okay. I'm six foot six. Audience. I grew up. At power forward. <laughs> I'm six foot six. From I was a center. At center. <laughs> From such and such university, Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt Chantel, get a rebound, <laughs> Merlin. I was asleep. Okay. Um, no, but in high school, so I was very awkward growing up. I was terrible at basketball when I first started, like awful at it. Okay. Um, I remember one time I was on my AAU team and I took the ball out and I was the only freshman on the number one AAU team in the country. So they saw that I was 6'4 as a freshman and that I could run and chew gum at the same time, mm. kind of. So they saw like the potential, right. but I was still terrible at the time. Okay. Okay. So my point guard takes the ball out and, um, or I take the ball out, pass it to her. She stops at the top of the key to wait for me. I'm looking at something in the stands and I like literally bump into her, knock her on the ground. The other team steals the ball and they go to the other. Anyway, that's how bad I was. Okay. Okay, wait. You said uh, we started with the greatest. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, okay, yeah, okay, sorry. Okay, okay. So, wanna... fast forward Boom. two years, junior year. Boom. And I am considered like one of the best players in high school in, in the country. And right. so I get invited to USA basketball tryouts. And <laughs> I like was so excited right and then i went through the week of tryouts and i it was the hardest thing i had ever done i thought that i was i sucked so like i was terrible i felt like i got my butt handed to me like it was right. bad but then they announced the team and i was on it and i literally was like ah! oh my gosh and like ran out of the door it was like ah! like literally it was so funny so what I think about that moment and I was just like, that is probably the ha like one of the happiest I've ever been because I totally didn't expect it and it was a surprise. So first the <laughs> Okay. Whoa, all right, all right, this is this is a lot. Okay. Transition. <laughs> so so you mean to tell me your freshman year, first of all, you were 6'4 in your freshman year. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was six feet as an eighth grader, grew three inches that year, then grew another inch that summer and started freshman year for 6'4. It's crazy. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> That's a lot. All right. So, so from freshman year to junior year, yeah. you put all that together. Somehow, I mean, I grew into my body, I grew another two inches. Yeah. I had a lot of training. I worked really hard. My okay. parents poured into me a lot. Right. Because yeah. I'm like, it, it's a lot. because you can't coach. Or you can't teach height, right? I right. understand. Not at all. But you can still be terrible and tall. Right. <laughs> so I was athletic, though. I just hadn't. There's a lot of limbs. Yeah, like, no, I no, couldn't no, 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 totally. control it. Look, I grew, a foot, <laughs> I grew a foot in the summer. I feel you. <laughs> um, but... That's a lot of work. Like, yeah. it's not like you went, it, like, the story should have started my freshman year, I was playing on the high school team. My junior year, I tried out for the best AAU team, and I made it. But you're telling me, <laughs> you went from a really great AAU team to an, a, a USA team tryout and made it. Yeah. But I think... That's crazy. I mean, it was, but I think the key is uh -huh. that I had people around me who saw my talent and believed in me before I saw it and knew enough to believe in myself. Right. Like, there was a point in my life where I coached college basketball, uh -huh. and having played the game for so long, I knew exactly what I was looking for. So when I walk into a gym and I see a 6'4 freshman who can run and move, whether she's good or not, I'm like oh, she's going to be something, right? Because right. I know what I'm looking for. But that 6'4 freshman, she has no idea that she's going to be good. Right. So I think that's the difference. You always <sighs> have to, it helps to have people that see who you can be before you know enough to think that. I got some bad news, Chantel. Anybody watching this video could have seen the 6'4 <laughs> freshman had a shot. 
No, but, not a big shot, but, but at least I a, had no idea. Right, 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 right. I had no idea. I'm gonna tell you something. If I was a betting man, <laughs> and the 14 year old six four walks in, I'm gonna roll a dice. That, but but there's a difference between like, okay, she needs to play basketball, and I'm gonna put her on the number one AAU team in the country. Because even though she's terrible, uh, one, no, I'm gonna no. put her on a really good team. One hundred percent. They totally believed in me enough. One hundred. I appreciate that because, yeah, because if the dream that they saw is any smaller, <laughs> you don't get there. Right. You exactly. know what I mean? Again. Exactly. Because again, in most cases, mm-hmm. you're playing on the high school team because there's that. Yeah. yeah. And. It don't. It don't My happen. It's terrible. It don't happen there. No. That's not where it happens. No. With all due respect, that's not <laughs> Sorry, high where coaches. it happens. <laughs> not enough resources. That don't. Stri- well. Yeah, that's that's dope. Yeah. So that was. I I can definitely remember. Probably one of the most exciting moments was was that, and it's. You know, it sounds so like not even cool because it's high school, like all the way back to high school. You're just no, like, no, no, no. But no. I was really genuinely surprised and excited, and I felt like I had done something. Totally, one of like one of my favorite moments was in high school, and it didn't even work out. So I what high was school. It? So when I first started, uh, when I first started modeling, the basically okay, modeling. I saw. Listen, his pictures be fire. Okay, like, sorry, here we go. but. I don't know. He opened up his laptop. I was like, oh. Oh, okay, Brandon. Okay. Here we go, folks. Sorry. All right. So when I first started modeling, there was a family friend of mine who knew this guy who was a talent scout. I went to a party. The talent scout liked me. He told me to come to his, uh, he told me my mom come to his office on Monday. We're going to meet, blah, blah. Okay. So he then takes me to another person and he's like, yo, we got this fashion show that's happening in New York. It's paying like. He said it could pay around twenty five grand a day. If okay. You book okay. It. Discovered at a party it, for a New York fashion show. How about this? <laughs> it. I was passed along through a, a family friend at church. Oh, okay. That's why you got to go to church. Come on. Church. I was <laughs> passed along by a family friend at church, and yep. that's how I went to the party. The guy was throwing a party for his son, and I met him at the party. Okay. So that's wasn't well, the party. It was the Jesus. Um, <laughs> Come and, on, Jesus is and my I, agent. <laughs> and I just remember like being so excited at the opportunity mm-hmm. that I was just kind of like, oh my goodness. <laughs> and just to, and again, and for me, it was like, a, it was a self conscious thing because I was always, the way that I had seen myself up into that point mm-hmm. um, wasn't the way the world saw me. Mm, why? Because I was, up until that point, I was short. Oh, I was okay. short. Was this after you grew? This is after I grew. Oh, okay. So okay. this is yeah, tall, yeah, yeah. Brandon. Oh, well. You know what I mean? So the, and what was, what was interesting for me is that there was a transition in, there was a transition in attention. Oh, yeah. Well. Oh, yeah. But not, but no, 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 <laughs> oh, but, but not in terms of numbers. Okay. It was in terms of audience. Because because I could always command an audience because I had charisma. I was mm-hmm. funny, and I knew. For me, I learned when I was when I wasn't the the best option on paper. Yeah. I could increase my chances if I could make people laugh. Yeah. Okay. So from from a young age, this is literally what I used to do. Um, my mom used to record Comic View, or we had yeah. Comic View on I VHS. Remember, I remember Comic View. <laughs> so I literally used to watch Comic View. Yeah. And I just learned somehow <laughs> what worked. You know what I mean? I, I never used the jokes from Comic View, yeah. but I just kind of like just really took a knack to comedy. Mm-hmm. I had a grandpa who was hilarious. Yeah. And I just saw the way somehow my brain just picked up how it worked. Yeah. So when I would take it to school, everybody knew I was funny. Okay. So it was cool for me to be around. So I, I didn't lack the attention, but what happened was is that the attention started to shift. It was still the same crowd of people, <laughs> but it was just more girls there this time. You know what I mean? So I was like... That 5-4 to 6-4 was... Yeah, it, it did it. It was nighttime to daytime. <laughs> you know? So, like... And, and, and again, for me, for me, my approach wasn't... It was ever going to be... Um, it was never going to be, hey, I'm good looking, what's up? 
Okay. Which is what the which is what the the guy who knows he's hot can do. The star of the football team can do. The guy hey, who never you... had to develop the personality and the the ability to make people laugh because he's always been that dude. Exactly. Or yeah, he worked under a different title. So mm-hmm. he was star football player, star oh, basketball, and player. that's enough. So my title meets you before I do. Yeah. I can. I my confidence is in my title. Mm-hmm. I'm on the varsity basketball yep. team. Hi, I'm Brandon. Uh, okay. My name is second. Yeah. My title comes first. Yeah. Which is why I think when men don't have titles, they have a hard time in life. They're like, because eh. they're not validated by a thing. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yes. So I was funny. You know what I mean? <laughs> like that was it. Oh, Brandon's hilarious. Yeah. Boom. Then you. And then it worked. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it traveled. But then, so when people started to see me as sexy, attractive, OMG, I'm looking like. I'm still using. It's the, like, I'm still, and he funny. I, look, I'm still <laughs> using the tactics from funny, and I'm like, oh, I never made you laugh. You're just saying, right? Wait, 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 wait. I haven't even done the, the jokes. I haven't wrote the love letter. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I had to. I had a whole like. I had to go around. You know what I mean? Now I'm like walking so through the front door. I'm like, so when this guy <laughs> sees me and he's like, "Yo, you can do the show," I'm like, "Yes, I can do this show." <laughs> I'm shook. This is so funny. I'm shook. I, 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 yeah. What? No. And then I'm looking at these guys again that have been they the model. Mm. Yeah. So they're already validated in models. <laughs> so they're already walking in chisel face. They walk in. I'm ready to do the show. <laughs> and I'm looking like, <laughs> hey, y'all oh, yeah. looking good today. Hey. What up though? <laughs> I got here. That is. I'm so just funny. here. You yeah. know what I mean? It ended up not working out. Basically, the guy ended up saying that my face was too young. Um, and um, literally worked out for the best. I will come to find out later. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, man, I just remember it being like a moment. I remember thinking like, oh, my God, if I book this, like, am I still going to be able to go to prom? <laughs> like, I don't mind, but like, if I got to. I mean, then I'll be famous and I might have to miss it. I, it was, no, for, me, for me, <laughs> but for me at the time, it wasn't real enough to even like take further like be famous i was just yeah. saying like if i can make twenty five thousand dollars like wow what? i mean that's that, a lot in high school like look, listen look right now <laughs> <laughs> shoot if i can make twenty five thousand dollars right now for look, one for day week, yeah for a week book it listen tell me what i gotta do is it legal <laughs> like, is it legal is it legal for a week legal? really that's it, it. Is it legal and is it ethical? Is it ethical? Is ethical? It ethical? I could do it. Can okay, I justify? Great. Can I justify? Can 25 I... G's in a week. Great. So it was. That's dope. Yeah. And That's I ended dope. up not getting it. But again, it was just that. I just remember that feeling was like something that was. Oof. Yeah. 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 So that accomplishment. High school counts. Give me moment number two. Um, Moment number two was being. um. Uh, man. Okay, well, I gotta go with this one. M- moment number two was being drafted in the WNBA. Um, it was... I, I almost didn't go with this one because I was so nervous right. that, like, I didn't fully enjoy it. Mm. But when I look in the grand scheme of things, I guess this would be moment number two. But, like, I literally had WNBA posters on my wall in high school. I remember when the league started, like... I had just fallen in love with basketball. I had been playing it for a little while, but um, I fell in love with it right around the time the league started. And then I was like, as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, this is my new dream. Yeah. I have to go to the WNBA. And then, um, so I had their pictures, their posters. I literally idolized Lisa Leslie. She's totally. my favorite player. And I just remember senior year, I called my, my sister, Kristen, who has always been my best friend, and when scouts started coming to my practices and coming to the games and stuff, and I was like, yo, Kristen, like, there's there's WNBA scouts at my practices. Like, they say I'm going to go lottery. Like, I, oh, my gosh, this is actually happening. Because we had been saying that we were going to go to the league, like, all of high school. Right. And uh, she was like, wait, so you're, you're really going? I was like, Kristen, <laughs> we've been planning this. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> Yo, hold it was me a, down. she will never live that moment down because like we literally have planned out our lives since high school together. Right. Um, but she'll never live that moment down. She was like, sorry, I had a I had a lapse. I had a lapse. But anyway. Yeah, yeah. So I ended up 
that night was crazy because they, they f had flown me out to the draft. Um, I had on a suit that to this day looks terrible now. You but LeBron, out, I felt like it you was You LeBron no. all white on? <laughs> like, it was tan and my, my shirt was like bl uh, brown and tan. Okay, and it okay. was a... Yeah, it so was not. With the Bernie Mac, okay. And then I had the, the brand new braids. Oh. But you know how when like women get their bra their hair braided for the first like the first couple days it's like too tight yes and it looks too much yeah, yeah exactly yeah, it looks so it's in there that that's how they look you know? amen uh, <laughs> i should have got them done the week before but you I can know see it that. was I can what see it was that. um and so anyway i knew i i thought i was going to go number 2 I, there was a possibility i would go number 1 but i thought it was going to be latoya thomas from mississippi state and then I was going to go number two. So I was just sitting there. And then I heard them call her name. And I was like, okay, I think I'm next. And then they called my name. And I was just like, I, I don't even know what to do. Uh, 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 oh, I guess I got to get up. And it was just crazy. So Hold on. It was, yeah. What? Okay, so I've known, I've, I've known that you went to WNBA. You got drafted number two? Yeah. Like the, <laughs> <laughs> like the second person? Yes. In the first round. Yes. <laughs> why do why does nobody know this? Does everybody am I, I mean, am I the last one to know? I mean, it was a while ago. It was a long time ago. Like I mean, I wouldn't get. I don't I, lead with that. I, <laughs> That's not the. Hi, my name is Chantal. I was drafted second overall. Thanks. Like I don't. Why? Where would that fit in anywhere? Like I, I don't know. You need where a, does that fit? <laughs> Okay, so it doesn't fit. All no. right. But you need a shirt or something. No. With... Oh, oh, you're getting I mean, a shirt. No. Oh, you're... Oh, oh. <laughs> Please don't get Oh, my. Oh, oh, you are getting a shirt. What? I can't. The second one? Yeah. Could have been so, the first one? Well, I wasn't. Yeah. She was dope, though. Like, she was... Fair enough. I, I'm not mad at her. She was dope. You... <clears throat> Whoa. Hey. But it yeah, it was a good it was a good moment. But you know what I think though is the reason I hesitated on making this one of the three would be because it was a dream of mine. I'd always hope for it. Number one, I was so nervous. Right. And number two, I went back to my hotel room after that night, after everything had happened and you know, photo shoots and all that stuff. I went back to my hotel room and it's weird. I was laying on my bed and I was like, man. I thought like I thought achieving this goal was supposed to make me like different. You know, uh, I thought wow. I thought achieving this goal was supposed to make me finally be enough, like uh, finally be somebody great, right. like wow, you know. Wow, wow, wow. And I was like I'm still me. Like I'm still I had a lot going on in college and there was like I was too. I was a the the star on the basketball court, and then I was a mess off the basketball court. And right. so, like looking back at that moment, I always felt like achieving that dream would make me finally be Bridget. one person that would be enough. Right. And it didn't happen. I I went through that. I I was drafted second overall, and at the end of it, I was still me, and I still didn't feel like enough. And so. I think for me, in looking back, that's one of the the reasons why I hesitated. Okay, so I also kind of want to fight you just a little bit because you're like, I was nervous all night. What were you nervous about? I was. Okay, no, 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 no. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me so preface nice. that. Me being an average Joe, right? I'm like, if I was in the situation, I'm like, yo, I could go second round. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I could I could go second round or I could be uh I could be a priority free agent. You know what I mean? Like Yeah. Okay, so you watching from the house, your family's there, you know how you vision it. You know, there's your grandmama there, they y'all all watching, okay? Yeah. Fifty seven, fifty eight. <laughs> I can't I can't <laughs> Okay, they didn't they didn't pick me. Oh my I'm god. Gonna call. Then I'm gonna bring, call. bring 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 Hey man, we just want to offer you this contract. Sorry, we can take you, so on and so forth. That person is nervous. Okay. In my mind. Okay. <laughs> he was there. He was there. Okay. Like, what are you about number one, number two? No, no. First of all. Okay. First of all. Okay, okay. Um, there's no guarantees until they call your name. 
Totally. You have always, we have all seen that person who thought they were going to be drafted lottery uh, and ended up drafted like second round. They right, thought right, they were right, going right. to go one through four, right? Right, right, right? Now, I didn't think that was going to happen, but in my mind, like it would have been failure if oh. I would have been drafted outside of the top four. Yeah. yeah okay. So like that would have been awful. Uh, right. Okay, so okay, okay, nervous, okay, 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 nervous okay. reason. Number one, got number it. two, you get drafted and you got to stand up in front of like all your peers, all the TV people, all everything. You literally have to walk up, give everyone a hug. Okay, great. Walk up the stairs. I'm literally thinking like, okay, this is the biggest moment of my life. Please do not fall. Oh, yeah, like yeah, yeah. don't trip up these stairs. Right. Um, then like you literally, you've been, you've been planning for this moment your entire life. You've been right, dreaming right, about right. it. So then you're scared that it won't live up to the hype. Uh, and then you got to take pictures and I'm like, okay, am I, am I, do I look fat? Do I look okay? You know what? Right, okay, okay, <laughs> okay, okay, that. okay. So okay, like there's, okay, okay. there's things, then you're talking to your coach and your GM for the first time. Like they call you and you're just trying to say the right thing. Then hey, you get Chantel, interviewed. what's up? You ready like, to play? Yeah. Did I wait? Anything I else? totally didn't say the right thing. You know, like right. and you're like beating yourself up. Yeah, it's okay. a lot. Okay, so. okay, okay. I think <laughs> I think that I, I, I place the nervousness just in a different box. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Is everyone has different reasons to be nervous? Everyone has different reasons to be scared. Um, these days, I do confidence and faith coaching. Right. And you know, people look at me and or somebody like you, and they're like, "We have no reasons to be insecure," and it's. Just not true. Right, right. Like, right. it's just flat out not true. Untrue. You look at the people who are on TV, you look at, and you're like, oh, they're never scared. They're never, ner no, we're all nervous. We're all scared sometimes. 100%. We all, we're all insecure sometimes. 100%. Some of the most successful people are the most insecure. Right. Because their confidence is, like you talked about earlier, in their titles, that's not them. They go home, just like I went home that day of the draft and had every reason to be confident. I was laying in my bed feeling like, I was missing something still. Right. So I think, um, you know, it's kind of like that. There's different reasons for nervousness. There's different reasons for fear. But we have to be careful of looking at people in certain situations and assuming that they are confident or not scared. Or you know. And look, just from that just from that story, if you guys were listening to the details, let me tell you something. God knew <laughs> what not to give me. Okay. <laughs> Okay, like sometimes you be like, man, God, give me this. God, give me that. God was like, don't get this, boy. I tell people all the time, if I was able to sing, if I could sing for real, yeah. there'd be no chance I'd make it to heaven. Because I'd be serenading all of them. I'm talking about <laughs> serenading them all. It wouldn't be no chance. It wouldn't be no shot. So God said, I want to see my son again. Let me not give him that. Then you said, after I got drafted, I went home to my bed and I thought I'm the same me. <laughs> I wouldn't have been home for a week. I would have been out on the town freaking it. I know I didn't I even go party. I, I, I party during that time okay. and I didn't even go party. That yeah, time. I don't know nah. What was. She said I went home to my. Nope. I would have been at the Marriott. Like I, mean, a, I was at a different city years, but I don't know. I wouldn't care. No, no. We mind. party when I got back to Nashville. I'll oh tell you my that, god! I would have been <laughs> what hood hopping like it was two thousand. What? That's yeah. so funny. So that I always say god that knew. God knew what not to give me. I say that about singing, but I say that about like when I see a really like super curvy girl. Cause I'm like, I'm not super skinny. I'm not super curvy. I'm like right in the middle. Okay. But when I see like some girls and how they built, I was like, yo, there would be zero chance I'd make it to heaven if I looked like her. Cause I mean, more power to you, but God, God knew what to give me. Look, <laughs> he knew what he could give me look, and, to and make sure I had a chance. Look, and Listen. we'll have this conversation off camera, but <laughs> I, I, I respect those women times a thousand because it's like- The ones that are spiritual. Like that can no, make it. No, 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 not even. Just in general, which oh, is why I don't God. have a double span, a double standard for men and women about sex. Because uh, okay. I'm yeah. like, girl, you got to turn down a hundred dicks a day before. Well, you know what? I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. If, if you didn't want to do nothing, you got to turn down a hundred a day. Literally. And those are from the people you don't even like. 
Right. Those are from the ones that ain't even your style. That ain't even no. your type. I got a. I have a friend. So and God she's bless. One of those girls. She's one of those girls, and I'm just like, she's beautiful. She's built. She's. I'm like, girl. Your battle. I love your battle. You. Is I love respected. you. God. God brought us together so I could help you. <laughs> Because I'm like I'm I'm a little older than her, so she's kind of like a, a mentee, you right. know. And I'm like, I'm I'm gonna help you do this. I'm gonna help you. Because I Cause know listen. it's hard. Listen, yeah, I'm, I know, <laughs> I know it's stressful for you. Amen. A honey, a day. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I said on camera. I was like, I can't hold this. The I'm, struggle, <laughs> the struggle, but it's okay, you know. It's. We've yeah. all got our things. We, are, we all, all have our struggles. We're all battling yeah. with something. Yep. Next moment. <laughs> oh. I'm not even gonna call it number three because it seemed like you had a. It seemed like you had one. You seemed like you had one. You were deciding if you wanted to rip. So we may do four if you got four. I feel like you was on the cusp. So we'll just do another moment. So this oh. doesn't have a number. Do we have a top? Okay. Well, so there's one I really want to share, but this the second one that I was gonna share was my jersey got retired at Vanderbilt. And that was like a dream. I told my coach when I came to Vanderbilt, I was like, I want to be the all-time leading scorer before I'd ever played a basketball game at Vandy. And he said, he looked at me and he said, if you're willing to work hard for it, I'll help you. And I said, all right. And from that day forward, um, he taught me how to be an All-American in three days. He- What in the Coach Carter? I just got chills. That was amazing. (laughs) What kind of- you're so silly. Oh my god. No, but he's he's like Coach Foster a basketball is life with amazing. Okay, Coach, go ahead. Coach no, Foster he so he tells you how to be all American in three days. Ready to go. Well, it was the first day of practice. Okay. We had a really hard practice and then he calls me over and he's like, Come here, come here. And he walks me down to Coach Godet, who is my post coach. Okay. And he said, You guys are gonna work out together for a little while. And I was like, I just had the hardest practice of my life. Like, what do you mean? But of course, I'm not. I'm a freshman. I'm not gonna tell my coach no. I'm just okay. I'm gonna work out. Second day, you guys are gonna work out together. Together after practice. Third day, same thing. Fourth day, I see Coach Godet start to go up to his office. I'm like, Coach Foster's standing over there, and I'm like, what the? So I run up to Coach Godet, and I was like, hey, are we gonna work out? And he's like, well, why didn't you say so sooner? And for the next, like, well, they were only my coaches for three years. So for the next three years, after every practice, we worked out together, whether it was an extra 30 minutes, whether it was an extra five minutes, whether it was an extra photo uh, film session in his office, like whatever it was, we were putting in extra work every single day. And um, so at the end of it, um, I ended up breaking the school record and becoming an All-American and, you know, getting drafted and all that. But, like, then, I think, I don't know how many years later. It was 2011, I think. Mm -hmm. And so it was eight years after I graduated. And um, they brought me back to retire my jersey, which they'd only retired three, or two women, one woman beforehand. So I was the second woman to be retired. Um, And... I just remember like there was a a big black sheet over my jersey and I didn't know what it was going to look like and then they um they revealed it and I just remember like I was like oh like (laughs) like, it was like the best moment ever in life and yeah it was crazy but again the reason I hesitated to share that I was going back and forth between the draft and that moment right same thing happened. I went back to my hotel room that they had paid for, Nashville, laying on my bed. And I was like, I just got my jersey retired. I just had thousands of people cheering for me. Everybody stood up. Like, it was awesome. And here I am alone. I have no one to share it with. And I still feel like there's something missing. And I literally cried myself to sleep that night. So like, it's so crazy because I have these giant moments that were so amazing and that everyone saw. They were very, I've lived a very public life, right? but then they were always coupled with, but the the private kind of like, dang. Wow. It's still not enough. Yeah, that is. Crazy. (laughs) Yes. Right. Um, Wow. Yeah. (laughs) 
<laughs> You're like, um... For the record, I I knew <laughs> Chantel was a basketball player because she's 6'6". Um, but the magnitude to which... I'm such a fan <laughs> of a great story. I'm having a blast. <laughs> I... I... I I had no idea. This is this is what it was. This is fantastic. Hey man, where's the book? Where's this book? I don't. I don't have it yet. I mean, you don't want to. Hello. <laughs> you don't want to know what's the in, one. I actually wrote my autobiography, and I had a publisher for it. Okay. But then I started. Um, I started college coaching, and you can't release anything honest as a college coach. Because it's not like propriety. You got can't it, be a it. real human. And so I told my publisher that I couldn't release it. And so I turned it down. Got it. Yeah. So it'll come out at some point. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, come on. I'm, I'm also tracking something here. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna let it I'm gonna let this run its course and then okay. I'm like okay okay next moment I want to know <laughs> wait no, no, I, I, I thought I, you were gonna no no I can't no I can't tell you <laughs> okay so the the last moment I will say and this is what I would really say was the best moment okay wait hold on hold okay. that okay let's make sure everything's cool rolling. <laughs> You're so funny. I know, it's, you know it hates. Okay, we're back. So basically, we just had to make sure everything is still rolling, just in case I'm lazy and don't decide to cut that. Ta-da. <laughs> no, so I guess what I would say the best moment was was six and a half years ago, September seventeenth, twenty thirteen, was the day I got baptized. Boom. So that was the day that my soul was saved. Hey. Um. And I had been on a faith journey, basically, you know, that whole, I had everything I wanted. I had my dreams. I, I had, you know, I, I was playing basketball. I was doing what I loved. I was, you know, dating high profile people. I had, I was making six figures since college. I was like, I was doing all of these things. Okay. I can't. <laughs> I can't. I, anyway. I was doing all of these things, but like I said, it I never felt like enough. It right, was there right. was still something missing. And so that is what led me to start on the process to really seek God. Right. Because I was like, okay, the world has given me everything that I know to need and is not hidden. Right. So what can I do? And so um yeah, I started to see God, started to really read my Bible and get around people who could really show me what the Bible said. And then I came to the point where I was like, okay, I want to be right with God. I want to, you know, repent of my sins and I want to give my life to God. And I was baptized. And I think back to that moment. And again, I have had so many, like, my life's awesome. I feel really blessed to have led this this life with so many amazing moments, but that was the moment when I came up out of that water, like, I just, I was free. I was wow. clean. I was, I was saved. I was, it was amazing. And then I remember that moment was amazing, but then the fact that I got to go home and I was by myself laying in my bed and it was complete and absolute peace. And it was like, this is it. Because it was different than all of those other awesome moments. Right. Because it was it was lasting. It was sustaining. Right. I didn't need anyone else there. I had a group of people around me that had walked me through the process of studying the Bible and trying to, you know, make sure, like, understand what I was getting myself into and, right. you know, understand baptism and all that. But, like, when I went home afterwards... I was by myself. It was me and God, and I was enough now, and I was peaceful. Wow! And I was like, "Great, that's the best moment of my life." Like, hands down, forget everything else I did. I've done. I would give it all away for for that moment. <laughs> Just waiting on the book, guys. No. Just waiting on the book. Is he? Hey, wow. man. 
Okay, all right. So, this chapter of your life, mm -hmm. if you had to title it, it would be called... Pass it on. It would be called Pass it on because um, I meet so many people who were me, mm. who we didn't get into all like I've I've been in abusive situations. I've I've had a lot of like hard That's things book. happen. That's for the book. That's, That's for the book. That's for the but, book. But like I I've met a lot of people who have all have these hard things happen in their life. But then they're they're talented and they're beautiful and they so they have all these amazing things happen, and I feel like people only focus on the shiny things mm -hmm. and they forget to help the person behind the shiny things heal. Right. And they don't they assume that because they have all the shiny things, they don't need to heal, and that they don't need God. Mm. And so for me. I want to pass on what I have learned about like how all that stuff is great. The, the amazing moments and the people, you know, standing ovations and all that other stuff is awesome. But God is the only thing that can really make you feel like enough consistently that never goes away. And to help people walk through this life. This life is crazy, dude. Like crazy. It is, it's crazy. And so I'm just passionate about helping people live their best life but with God, because that's the only way that you can truly live your best life. Amen. So. Okay. So we did the past. <laughs> we did the current moment. Oh, no. Future. Okay. What's next? <sighs> I don't know. I, and again, <laughs> nobody knows. Obviously, I know. the book is coming, so we got it. But it. But if you had to, if you had the best case scenario, it. Mm-hmm. This is like that moment where this is that moment where you can you can you can put out some dreams and we'll be able to come back and be like, yeah, dang, she said that back in. I know, right? Um, okay, so very shortly, I'm I'm releasing like I I put together a a journal called Design Your Happy, and it's for like entrepreneurs and creatives, side hustlers, to design their vision with God and then a system to like do it every single day, right? right. So I'm about to launch that. Um, and so if I were to say going forward, I would say that, um, that would be a framework in which I can really help people design their happy with God. Wow. And so I would love to, I, I already work full time for myself, but I would love to add that to the things that I do. Right. Um, uh, regularly. Tour so, the world with that. Is that what we're saying? Yeah. Okay. That. Cool. <laughs> you got it on level. I'm trying to take you to the moon. To that would, tour the world. <laughs> that would be amazing. Okay, that would okay, be okay. amazing. And then I I'm I hate to say this, but like no. I'm single. Okay. And so I hope that like I'm good be I hate you right now. I'm like later. I'm at a point where I'm peaceful with that. Oh, yeah. However, However, I do hope that that is in the future to go through this life with somebody. I think so. And I would love that person to be the lead person in this calling that God has already placed me in. 100%. So, like, I need somebody who can walk into different arenas with me. Like, I can walk into a church and I can walk into a black tie gala and I can walk into a boys and girls club and it's going to be all the same. Right. So, like, I need a plus one in all those areas and not just that, but, a, like, a lead partner in right. that. So. A lead partner. I, I love it. I hear you. I hear you. Y'all yeah. so, hear, hear it. Lead <laughs> so, partner. I sleep. So, <laughs> I'm hope, so, I hope that as I'm, like, building my empire with yeah. God, right. he brings somebody to build it also. Dreams. Ep Epic. Dreams. <laughs> Epic. Um, wow. This has been uh, this has been great. This has been uh, moderately fulfilling. Like I feel like I just I just feel like I just was on a roller coaster ride. It's a great story. Yeah, I am funny. so curious of the details. I'm like I might need. I don't know if I can wait for the book. I might need to sit down and just do a basketball life with <laughs> because right like like we just got the surface yeah. stuff. And it was, like, some really good stuff. So, I know that if we were, like, trying to, like, okay. die, 
<laughs> if I was white, I'd be blushing right now because this is kind of embarrassing. But amen. Like I'm like I'm not. You, I haven't even looked at her. I'm looking at y'all now. We need to. F- amen. God is good. We man. need a book. I feel like he's like choreographed. He's just choreographed my life. And trust me, I look at it every day and I'm like, I don't know how I got here, but thank you. Right. Like, I, I don't know. Got it. Now look here. <laughs> now look here. Cause see, see, that's how people be passive. The God is choreographing it. Okay. Well, I need you to put a step in. I need you to put a step on it. I guarantee you he going to make the music go right with the beat. Go right with the beat. So we need, a, we need a book. We need a we need a, a in depth interview. We Got need a, a something. Got it. Cause the, the book is being worked on. My autobiography. Okay, so I'm working on a book right now. Um, it's like it's a book for the type A woman trying to follow Jesus. Perfect. So like that's the book I'm working on. The autobiography will come later after I'm married. Okay. So that'll come later. Sorry, fellas, guys. Fellas, it's time. Nah. <laughs> fellas, it's time. Nah, we because, ain't on that. We ain't on that. No, no, we, we, we ain't on that. Listen. Because I'm really curious. Listen, that's later. That'll that'll come when it comes. It's going to come. It's going to come. It's going to come. Um, okay, where can they find you on social? Let's, let's. Uh, I'm always on Instagram always. at Miss Chantel, M I S S. C H A N T E L L E. And then all the other information is on my website, confidentlyhis.com. 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 Yeah. <laughs> this is mad festive. Uh, I Dude, appreciate this is your such time. a great concept. Like, it's awesome. Thank you very much. No problem. This, this was fun. No problem. Like, I did something. I'm just sitting in the chair drinking water. <laughs> I mean, I appreciated your stories too. Like, and you're hilarious. So it was great. It was awesome. Again, I was just sitting here in a chair. So this has been fantastic for me. Um, now now who's trying to downplay? Now who's trying to do it? I, like I, I put him. I, I did not. Right, play. exactly. So basically, so it's been fantastic. <laughs> Until the next time. It's been the journey with Brandon Thomas. Hey. Boom. <laughs>